Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Live with Rank Show, rainy Tuesday edition. Thank you so much for tuning in. Got a lot to uh, to cover today. Couple interviews I'll inform you about, and if you would like to call in, the number is 269-441-9595. Once again, that's 269 269- Four four one ninety five ninety five. You can email me at rank R E as an excellent N K at townsquaremedia uh, dot com, and I'll be getting that app chat up on our new computer system here. I know I should have done it earlier, but uh, th- there's other people in the studio before the show here, so I will get that up and running. So right now, email me at rank R E N K at townsquaremedia dot com. We'll be able to talk back and forth. At the bottom of this hour, so 9.32 about, I will have Congressman Bill Heisinga in the newly created, he's running in the newly created 4th District. He would be running up against Fred Upton if Upton decides to run. He still hasn't. So they reached out to me, Congressman Heisinga's group, people, and asked if he could come on air, and he's actually going to come on air in studio. So we'll talk to him, get his thoughts. First time I'm meeting him, so I'm interested in where he stands on the issues. And then at the top of the 10 o'clock hour, it's going to be fun. I published a piece this morning, to pray or not to pray, that is the question. And Michigan County votes to not pray. Now, many of you already know, you can go to WBCKFM.com, my flagship station, and check out the piece uh, there. It should be floating around the top somewhere. You can always go to meet the host on the right-hand side and uh, click on uh, me, my handsome picture, and you'll see all our pieces there or my pieces there. Uh, And eventually, it gets put up on the affiliate stations you're listening to me on. I saw this reported, and I reached out to the group. It's a group called the Freedom From Religion Foundation. It's kind of like an agnostic or an atheist group. And they are integral in the part of the article I wrote. And I reached out and said, hey, would you guys like to come on air and talk about this? And a staff attorney, Chris Line, will be doing that at the top of the 10 o'clock hour in which I will be asking my one question, I ask all of them. And we'll get into that. A lot of things going on with Russia. We'll get into that, obviously. Uh, It is very interesting from the perspective, I wonder if uh, Biden is regretting back on January, excuse me, February 21st. So almost two years ago. Yesterday, it would have been two years ago. Wow, isn't that interesting? Two years ago to the day, Vladimir Putin comes out and says, I'm going to invade Ukraine. And then two years earlier, Biden tweeted, quote, Vladimir Putin doesn't want me to be president. He doesn't want me to be our nominee. If you're wondering why, it's because I'm the only person in this field who's ever gone toe to toe with him, end quote. Well, I guess you're going to go toe to. Yeah, he did under Obama and Biden and Obama lost. They gave him Crimea. Now, is it interesting, everybody, that nothing happens under Trump, no wars. In fact, we have less wars under Trump. And now under back when Biden, Obama, Biden are back in the office, Russia makes their move again. They'll probably invade. As I said, they wouldn't invade. I said yesterday they invade. I knew it wouldn't be up through Sunday because China told them not to until the Olympics are over. Could be today. But they're going to be uh, they're going to invade. And Biden said Vladimir Putin doesn't want me to be president. He doesn't want me to be our nominee. If you're wondering why, it's because I'm the only person in this field who's ever gone toe to toe with him, end quote, and lost. He forgot to say. 
Well, Putin waited till you became president and you were seated as president. And now what? So we'll get deeper into that. I want to cover some Michigan news uh, before we do that. And part of it is setting up this interview that I'm having at the top of the 10 o'clock hour, because I know at the bottom of this hour, we'll be speaking with Congressman Huizinga, and I don't know if I'll have time to do this. And in my piece, again, titled To Pray or Not to Pray, that is the question, and the Michigan County votes to not pray. What? And I asked the question, was it Hamlet? William Shakespeare? Me? Or someone else that asked that question, to pray or not to pray? Because whoever it was... Leela now County Board of Commissioners, and that's up there by the Traverse City, way up there in the, in the uh, north part of the uh, Lower End Peninsula. Their Board of Commissioners voted five to two last month to not pray. The county board stopped praying before their legislative meetings last month and decided that instead of praying, they would call for a moment of silence. They did so because of this atheist group called the Freedom From Religion Foundation, sent a letter to them back in September demanding that they stop saying a prayer before their meetings. Now, in that letter, they wrote, quote, we write to the request that the board and it end its prayer practice either by replacing it with a moment of silence or removing it completely in order to respect the views of all Leelanau County residents, end quote. Now, apparently, that letter scared some of, some of, if not all five of the commissioners, to vote against praying before their meetings. The Freedom From Religion Foundation co-president, Annie Lori Gaylor, said in a news release, get this, quote, and can I say amen to that? We commend the hard work of our local activists who fought for inclusivity and the wisdom of the Leelanau County Board for listening, end quote. So not only does this group threaten people with lawsuits, they then mock them when the people buckle and give them what they want. Did Annie's head turn while she said the word amen or just smoke come out of her ears? Did you catch that? And I say amen to that, an atheist, or certainly a person who is not prone to be religious using a religious word. Now, it's interesting to note when you do a research, or excuse me, well, it was my research. When you do search a search for the organization, you find the following, and I gave it to you. It's FFRF, Defending the Constitution. Ask any of them or anyone who supports these groups, where in the U.S. Constitution does it exactly say there needs to be a separation of church and state? Nowhere. Nowhere in the U.S. Constitution does it state that there should be a separation between the church and the state. And that's what I'll be asking Chris, their staff attorney, at the top of the hour. Please point to it. I often tell you about years ago, I I interviewed one of these national groups. This one, the one I interviewed years ago, was out of Washington, D.C. And they were coming down on a young boy in some middle school or, or even elementary school because at the end of saying the, the notes or whatever of the day, the announcements of the day in the morning, he would say, God bless you, and they got mad at that kid. And they came down on him quite harshly. So then I came down on them quite harshly, and they couldn't answer that question. I know what they'll get into. They'll say, well, it's even if they do use the words, it's not in the Constitution, but you have to look at the letters. I'm ready for that one, too. And we'll certainly get into that. A professor from Stanford Law School was asked that question. He stated, quote, the words separation of church and state are not in the Constitution. I think this is a shorthanded version of what the Establishment Clause means. He added, noting the passage in the Constitution that reads, Congress shall make no law respecting an an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Basically, you can't have a state religion. 
One thing the five Leelanau County commissioners that voted to end saying a prayer prior to the meeting has going for them is the words bend over cowards are and, and cowards are also not in the U.S. Constitution. 269-441-9595 if you want to give us a quick call before my interview. Not next segment, the segment after that with Congressman Heisinga. You're listening to Live with Rank, and we'll be right back after this. You're listening to Live with Rank. I got to get that fixed a little bit there. You're listening to Live with Rank. Appreciate that. That kind of goes a little, transitions a little too quickly. Again, getting used to this awesome new equipment I get to play with every day. You listen to me, Rank, on the Live with Rank show. I was just telling you about this piece I wrote. And at the top of the 10 o'clock hour, so that first segment, we'll be talking to Chris Line, staff attorney for a group called Freedom from Religion Foundation. And in fact, where did I put that? I know I have it here. Here it is. The purpose, they say, is uh, the purpose of the Freedom from Religion Foundation, as stated in its bylaws, are to promote the constitutional principle of separation of state and church and to educate the public on matters relating to non-theism. Now, where they may go, and I'll tell you ahead of time, he's going to say something about, about, well, in our own purpose, we don't say it actually states it in the Constitution. We talk about the principle. (laughs) Well, that opens up quite a lot, doesn't it? 269-441-9595. If you have a thought about what we're talking about today, love to hear from you. In fact, let's go to Will in Battle Creek. Good morning, Will. Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Ray. Good morning, sir. I'm doing fine. Hi. hi. Okay. Uh, I actually am a property owner. I own land on Lake Minister and Lake Lillianau. And um, I'm kind of curious if you're talking to this uh, individual or the party that <clears throat> was um, bringing this matter up, could you find out if the uh, people actually own land there and if they're taxpayers? And also, were they in attendance of the meeting itself? I would say no. Uh, no uh, uh, oh, okay. Okay. You know what? I forgot a pen. I've got to write. So you're, I know the group, the group I'm talking about, Freedom From Religion Foundation is out of Wisconsin. So that's where this guy's going to be calling in. But they talked about local activists. So yes, that's a very good question. And I hope to remember to uh, get a pen and write that down. Uh, that, uh, I, I, or if you could yeah, email like me. If you, do you have access to email? <laughs> Will? Uh, yes, uh, not at the moment. All right, well, so you won't be, well, if you can, by 10 o'clock, email that to me so uh, I don't forget because a lot of things happen and I just forgot to bring in uh, some pens into the station. (laughs) Uh, So I would appreciate that. uh, If you can, if not, I'll try to remember that. You're wondering if they had the local, when they talked about local activists there, uh, were those local activists property owners? Uh, That's a good point. I don't know. I don't know if it matters because five out of a five out of your yeah, seven. But are, they, but are they actually attending the meeting themselves? And okay. And if they are, and um, are they objecting at the meeting or strictly just to a letter? Because they could just be anybody uh, writing a letter. Right. And so I will definitely I th- do my best to remember to discuss that or ask that question. Okay. Right. But what are okay. your feelings okay. about it, Will? So you own property, you're saying, in Leela now. I'm like Leela now. Yeah, like I'm like Leela now. And, and what are your thoughts uh, that they... That, okay, what are your thoughts that they uh, stopped? I don't think the, the board should be pressured into anything regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, you're just um, kowtowing to possibly just uh, one or two individuals. Uh, I could see it if they were attending meetings and they wanted to check to it. But if they're just strictly writing a letter complaining about it, because uh, I think you mentioned it was in a letter uh, that they wrote, I'd just like to know if they're actually going to the meetings. All right. Well, the letter was written from the foundation, that's for sure. And uh, we will find out. I will try to re- ask and remember to ask them that question, okay? Yeah, but he- so it would be like me writing a letter complaining about uh, 
uh, something religiously happening, say, in Lansing, someplace like that. Well, yeah, or California uh, or Texas or exactly. Canada, where they have now become a uh, dictator-like state. And, man, it is even worse than you right. thought. We're going to get into that later today. All right, Bill, thanks. I mean, Will, I'm sorry. Thanks a lot for calling in. Appreciate that very, very much. 269 four four one nine five well actually hold on because coming up in the very next segment we'll be talking to congressman heisinga and to find out what he has planned because he has moved into a new redistricted uh, district the fourth i think he was in the sixth and he's moved to the fourth that would be him running against the current congressman in, in the seat for some of that is Fred Upton. Fred Upton, it's my understanding, still has not determined if he's actually uh, going to run or not. I do know there's a state rep that's running and another uh, gentleman. So I uh, is my first time meeting the congressman, and I'm glad he's able to come in and have this interview to discuss the issues with all of you guys. And then after that, we'll uh, certainly, well, we'll go into that other interview and we'll open it up um, after that. Accused ringleader in Whitmer's kidnapping case. Quote, I was high on pot during secret FBI meetings. So the person they thought, the ringleader, that was going to, first they said, take down Michigan, take over Michigan. And then they said, kidnap the governor uh, with, uh, I think, him and, was it eight, seven, eight other people were going to take over the state and then kidnap the governor. Uh, he was high all the time. And he said, they knew I was high all the time. So I thought that was kind of uh, kind of interesting uh, to to read. Also, I have here, I keep, well, you know, I'll leave this to when we talk about the COVID issue. I'm just going to leave that for the COVID issue. Coming up will be my interview with Congressman Heisinga. And he is a couple things. He was supporting the Canadian truckers. So I want to see what he's going on with that. He recently fought against the IRS and their whole um, face scans issue uh, and he joined 94 other Republicans to reopen the Capitol to the American people. It's still closed? It's still closed. Hmm. Talking about reopening the American Capitol. There's still people for trespassing sitting in jail with no bail. Yet Democrats, Biden's people, and the Democrats bailed out a guy who attempted the murder, a black man, Quintez something, who attempted the murder of a Jewish man. And he's an anti-Semite. To boot, he got bail of 100000 and the Democrats bailed him out. But people who were just jailed for trespassing are still sitting in these, what people call Dungeness-type jails in D.C. I hope people wake up. The polls are showing it. Well, let's see what's happening. You're listening to me, Rank, on the Live with Rank show. Coming up next is the congressman. I did not do that. I have no- 95.3 WBCK. Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Morning, noon, and night, our news team keeps you informed. Lacey James, Brandon James, Brad Carpenter, and Alex Maddox. 95.3 WBCK. We are Battle Creek. You say yes, I say no. You say stop, and I say go, go, go. Oh no, you say goodbye. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and I apologize uh, for that. Let's see what. 
I'm now afraid to do anything else in here. Kind of looking up what I got to do here. All right. I apologize for that very long commercial break. As many of you know, I'm sure when I talk to the engineers later today, I'll find out it is a user error and not a software. But uh, I, it, we weren't. We actually did the next commercial break also. So Congressman Heizinga Hi, can have a, a long time to talk, and that's what we're going to do. So welcome to the show, Congressman. First time ever. We just met today. Appreciate you coming in. Yeah, Rank, it's uh, good to be with you. And for those of you that uh, are listening in, uh, I'm pretty sure that Rank is running all of the East Coast's radio uh, from uh, from this little station here. So and, and this board that's in front of them. So a <laughs> lot, lot going on, but it really, really good to be with you. And uh, so pleased that we can spend a little time right. in the bigger. Sh now, why is my. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> Let me see if I can. In well, that's interesting. Something's cutting off. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let me see if I can fix something here. Does that help? Uh, maybe not. I'll just start riffing. You know, no, I know what's happening. It's just when I talk, uh, your mic goes off. And when I, so I got to find out from engineer once again, what is going on. I'm sorry for being this. And yes, most people aren't running the board. You know, when you get to the next level, someone else actually runs the board and then you have your show and not have to worry about uh, again, thanks for uh, coming into the show, uh, Congressman. Uh, appreciate that. So why don't you introduce yourself to yeah. my uh, my my uh, listeners? Yeah. Well, uh, like I said, uh, great to be with you. And uh, we've heard uh, from a number of people as uh, we were looking at running in this new area of, uh, of Battle Creek and Kalamazoo uh, that you were the guy to come talk to. And so we wanted to do that. Um, so it's funny that you say uh, when uh, when when you're the guy at the top, Right, you're running everything, running the board. I'm actually a small business owner myself, uh, third generation sand and gravel operation. Family's been involved in construction for decades. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, my background after I graduated from uh, Calvin College with my oh so employable political science degree, uh, Rank had to pull his uh, umbrella out for my dripping sarcasm on yeah. that one. But um, uh, I went uh, into actually, real estate. It's just my son has one too, yeah. so I, I, <laughs> ah, I understand. It. Yes, you do. But as I recall, you're a finance guy. So. So uh, you yes. get the numbers part. Uh, but uh, you know, my, uh, my background is in real estate developing, still involved in that. Um, I've owned uh, our, uh, our sand and gravel operation with a, a cousin of mine now for 23 years, uh, going on 24 years. And it's fascinating having both a foot firmly planted in the real world, the business world, and a foot planted solidly in this public policy world. It helps. It really, really helps because I'm able to see the effects of our policy decisions, whether it's taxes or regulation or you know healthcare, whatever we've been dealing with, uh, COVID shutdowns. Interestingly enough, uh, the state of Michigan decided that uh, my three employees on 185 acres out in Jenison, Michigan, couldn't safely distance uh, from each other. So uh, we got shut down uh, for five weeks uh, back at the beginning of COVID. Uh, by the way, these guys, if they come within 50 feet of each other during the day, it's by accident. But, uh, you know, it's those kinds of things well, how, that have been how, really helpful. How did, well, that's good that you have that type of actual experience when it comes to that. And just real quickly, from the perspective of what you just brought up, how did the state believe that on how many acres did you say? Oh, it was 185. 185 acres, three people couldn't stay six feet apart. That's what they were telling you? Well, it, it's what they were telling everybody, right? This was when they were coming in and shutting down every business because we had to socially distance and you couldn't safely, uh, safely distance from each other. So we finally ended up getting recognized as a, quote, essential uh, business, which allowed one of our guys to come in and basically load up trucks uh, that were hauling sand and stone uh, that would us either going into um, uh, uh, f most of them, a lot of them were farm uh, uh, projects. You know, people were out and having to build and redo their farms after right. the after the winter. Um, uh, some construction uh, that was going on, but it was very, very limited. And the whole point was you had industries like that. Uh, whether it was construction or whether it was uh, was other uh, industries where people were outside and you had these this 
rigid uh, ruling from the state that said, nope, doesn't matter what your industry is. We're going to keep your employees safe because they implied you aren't interested in doing so and your employees aren't smart enough to uh, uh, to, to stay safe. So we, the state, are going to step in and, and do this. And that's, that's the kind of mentality, frankly, that uh, government, whether it's at the federal level where I'm working out in Washington or whether it's at the state level where I had served, I did, I did uh, six years as a state representative back in the early 2000s with, uh, with Jennifer Granholm, who was the, the uh, governor at the time, yeah, our Secretary been, of Energy. Yeah. That must have been fun. Yeah, you've been a congressperson, congressman since 2011, correct? Yes. Yep. Got elected in 2010. Yep. Sixth district, did I'm getting that right? Uh, no, actually, I served the currently in the second. Second yes. district. Yep. And now it's it's everything's been morphed and, yeah. and changed. And now you're in the second, uh, excuse me, the fourth district. Yep. In, in which Fred Upton has at least part of that. Why don't you explain to my listeners so they may know, hey, this is a guy that I could interview, sure. excuse me, I could vote for, as opposed to voting for Fred if he gets in the into the office, yeah. or excuse me, gets into the race. Why don't you describe what the new 4th District is? Yeah, and, and I have to do that uh, just with the slight setup of the new redistricting commission, uh, which is uh, supposed to be a nonpartisan redistricting commission. I will pause there and allow others to uh, use air quotes around that. Uh, if you base, if you look at some of those maps in the state house, the state senate, and the Congress, uh, the congressional maps, they were in charge of drawing all those. Um, and uh, what uh, what they did is they took parts of my current district that I represent, the second. Uh, they took parts of Peter Myers district in uh, in Calhoun County, uh, the third district, and then a larger chunk of what Fred Upton currently represents as the sixth district and created the fourth district. It's a it's a new uh, newly created district, southern half of Ottawa County, all of Allegan County, all of Van Buren County, the northern third of Berrien County. So it's St. Joe, Benton Harbor down to kind of almost Stevensville. Then it comes across to Kalamazoo County. It's got all of Kalamazoo County except for the bottom tier of townships along the southern part of, uh, of the county. And then it picks up Battle Creek and the four surrounding townships in Calhoun County. So it's, it's, a, it's fairly different, as you can imagine. And um, uh, a, a lot of people are trying to figure out uh, how Battle Creek and Holland have uh, have some connections and and those kinds of things, but that's you know this is the this is the problem uh, that uh, that has been created with bad policies in Michigan, which have all, have encouraged people to leave the state. You know, we lost uh, a congressional seat because of uh, I would argue many of the policies that uh, that allowed uh, people to to go seek or encourage people to go seek. Uh, different climes and uh, and different states, and so here we are, kind of stuck with the uh, aftermath. Right, because when I started looking into these maps, I'm like, wow, they're moving a lot of stuff around. And and believe me, I, I I've been calling it the Democrat Redistricting Commission after we found out two of the independents actually weren't really upfront and honest, and were Bernie lovers, bro, Bernie Bros. And it's a it's a type of independent, right? Yeah, you know? <laughs> right. Well, I guess to some extent it is. So it certainly is not a an independent, and it's definitely a left leaning uh, district. So in studio with me is Congressman uh, Bill Heizanga. And I wanted him to come on air. He asked to come on air to talk to all of you because many of you may uh, be in his new district. As you said, certainly uh, he outlined what what uh, districts, excuse me, what counties and parts of counties he is is uh, now running for. Uh, and I, I say Fred Upton, but Fred has not put his, his foot into the race yet. I know there's a state representative uh, that is running, and I think one others, uh, I think one other, when they redistricted, there used to be a lot of people running in it, four or five of people were yeah. running for the first time, and then when they redistricted uh, it and saw you were coming in, I think they bowed out and said it'd be a little uh, tough. As you know, it's very hard to run these races, is it not? It is. It is. Look, Look, uh, you are uh, you are representing almost seven hundred and fifty thousand people. Uh, obviously, when uh, when you are in a more compact area, that is uh, that means geographically it's a little smaller. Uh, but uh, outside of Metro Detroit. Um, we're going to be in multiple counties. And currently I go north. I've got Ottawa County, kind of Holland area 
up to Ludington and then take in Lake County and come down uh, to Grand Rapids. And I've got all the suburbs of Grand Rapids. And that kind of got flipped on its head. There's a new district that is going to be Muskegon, Muskegon Heights, northern part of Ottawa County, and then Grand Rapids uh, and uh, in the surrounding areas. And then uh, when they when they split Ottawa County, uh, they attached it down, basically going south. The you know the fifth district, which is the southern two thirds of Berrien County. Uh, that's uh, that uh, Tim Wahlberg, who's uh, current congressman, has, has said he's going to be running in that. It literally stretches from Lake Michigan to Lake Erie, Berrien right. County, all the way to Monroe and I, the entire bottom of the state. So uh, there's uh, there's some questions as to kind of what was the thinking behind the creation of these. But it is what it is. It is what it is. And it's kind of crazy. Well, what, what do you want people who don't know who you are, Congressman? Yeah and may want to vote for you in this upcoming race. What do you want them to know about you personally? And then what are the issues that motivate you the most that you are not going to fall back uh, from? They are that, uh, that moral ethical line that you, you use yeah. when you look at all of these multitude of craziness happening in, yeah. in that swamp. It is, it is multi-layered. And I, and I should take a step back. Um, when I, uh, when I was in real estate, I, uh, my dad was a local city councilman up in Zealand and inv- I was involved in local politics, just recreationally. And, uh, m- my predecessor, Peter Hookstra, a guy who uh, may be a familiar name to many. He ran for governor and uh, and then ran for Senate against uh, Debbie Stabenow a few years ago. Um, he asked me to come work for him. And uh, I ended up uh, going to work for him as his district director, kind of his eyes and ears. I uh, spent six years doing that. Wasn't planning on that, I, uh, but uh, ended up doing six years of uh, working for Pete and then did six years in the state legislature. Um, and uh, I got passionate about a couple of things. First of all, you'll find out from uh, from me and, and learn quickly. I'm a complete homer for Michigan. Uh, I'm I'm the guy that walks around in Washington D.C. and people laugh at me because I forever am holding up my hand, pointing around the state where, where uh, yeah, where the district is, where I am, where I'm traveling to. Um, and uh, so uh, that that's uh, that's that's my first love and passion. And coming out of that, you know, we look. We know that there are three main drivers to the Michigan economy. Economy, manufacturing, uh, agriculture, both the production as well as processing, and tourism, right? Now, tourism has taken a huge hit because of COVID and what's been going on, as have all of them, frankly. Right. Uh, but uh, I, I, even though I sit on a committee that's called the Financial Services Committee, we have oversight of uh, all the banks and credit unions, insurance companies, the Federal Reserve. We can talk about inflation at some point uh, along here, too. Um uh, I uh, I really focus on kind of those three things. Even so, even though I don't sit on the agriculture committee, we do a lot of work with the ag industry, both growers and the processors. Uh, and uh, uh, even though I don't sit on the commerce committee, I deal with every publicly traded company. And so you look at the publicly traded companies that are uh, in manufacturing and all of their suppliers that are in manufacturing, whether it's office furniture, automotive, uh, medical devices, you name it. Uh, that's that's a key part. And uh, when it comes to sort of the tourism side, uh, I decided to get very involved in the Great Lakes issues. And so I'm the Republican co-chair of something called the Great Lakes Task Force. And uh, this is a group of, uh, of, of uh, both Republicans and Democrats from around the Great Lakes who very much focus on what are those issues like invasive species, like PFAS, uh, uh, the uh, the Sioux locks? That was something that uh, which is about trade, right? Um, so that's been a it's real not, focus. It's not just <clears throat> Michigan Congress people; it's Wisconsin, it's, yep. uh, Ohio, Ohio, yep. Illinois. Yep. Yeah, everybody who touches the uh, the New Great York. Lakes. Yes, and we coordinate with them. And uh, you know, look, and this is what I always say: we we have to be uh, cognizant and can protect both the economy and the ecology of the Great Lakes. It's it's a resource that needs to be used and used properly, uh, but it also needs to be defended. Whether it's you know the dry Southwest that uh, over a number of years has attempted to try to stick a pipe in the the Great Lakes water system and literally pipe water all the way across the country, uh, we deal with Canada and those kinds of things. So um, you know that's uh, you know you were asking about my passion though. Um, and I've, I've got something that has uh, been really, I think, an issue for many of us as we've been looking at what's been happening in Washington. 
it's spending, the debt and deficit. And when I got to Washington, D.C. In, in 2011, after being elected in 2010, um, I was one of the founding members of something called the Balanced Budget Amendment Caucus. And it was a bipartisan caucus that looked at putting a, uh, an amendment to the U.S. Constitution that would require, just like they have here in Michigan, uh, the, it would be require a legislature and the governor to balance a budget. And in this case, it would be the House and the Senate and the president to balance the budget every year. And uh, I got to believe with the, with the rampant spending that uh, everybody's been seeing and, and the boondoggles that have been coming out of it, uh, that, uh, that is something I think we're, our, your listeners or and I are going to agree on on a number I, of Yeah, those. but I don't think anybody believes it will ever happen because it hasn't happened under – it didn't happen under Trump. It, it's not happening under Biden. It didn't happen under Obama. It, 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 in fact, <clears throat> I always tell people I was amazed. Night, if you go back to Treasury.gov and the debt of our country, yeah. 1958 was the last time our debt went down. 1958, even during the, the Clinton years when we had the, the Newt Gingrich Republican yep. surplus, that money must have been spent because our debt still went up. Well, we and actually, my predecessor Hookstra was on the budget committee and uh, with with a number of people, and uh, they worked with uh, the Clinton administration to put the the, uh, the 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 federal budget budget into balance. They actually had a surplus. But you're right. What uh, what they did at that point uh, is uh, that was sort of the price of this was spend more, right. and and that's that's the sad nature of government, right? Whether it's local, state, or federal, uh, there is always that desire to spend more, do more, and the problem is is with thirty trillion dollars in debt. By the way, twelve zeros in that. So at some point today, everybody ought to write down what a one with 12 zeros looks like, but start at the right and you see what a thousand bucks is, 10,000 bucks, 100,000 bucks, a million bucks. I mean, this is real money. And uh, what we're going to do to our kids and our grandkids is unconscionable. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we are not going to see massive rampant inflation uh, and we become, you know, the, uh, you know these, these failed states that have had just massive uh, inflation that has devalued their dollars but uh, <clears throat> if we're not careful, that's the direction we're headed. We got about a minute left uh, in in the studio with me, not just on air this time, but actually in the studio with me is Congressman Heisinga. He's running in the new fourth district that we're talking about. Many of you will have a chance to actually either uh, vote for him or possibly someone else who is running in that new fourth district. Fred Upton is the guy who uh, currently has a lot of that new fourth district and what would you say? I got a minute left. Why should these people vote for you and not an Upton or someone else in the race? Uh, I think my background, uh, both as a small business owner, uh, as a social fiscal conservative in the policy realm, uh, you know, you were asking earlier about what am I, what am I passionate about? One is the debt and spending and deficit. On the social side, uh, my wife and I uh, have been very involved in the uh, in the pro life movement. Uh, that's something that's near and dear to us. <clears throat> Excuse me. She's been on the board of a uh, crisis pregnancy center for a number of years. Um, it's it's something that we're passionate about. And uh, you know, look, I think I'm going to be a uh, true conservative voice in the uh, in the U.S. House, and and it'll be backed up by my record that I've already shown. And uh, look, I think was, now is the time for that. And I'll have you back in when we have a little bit more time now that we've introduced you to myself, actually, for the first yeah. time meeting you and the audience. We'll have you back in to get more details about the actual policies and bills that you are uh, pushing. You're listening to the Live with Rank Show. Congressman Bill Heising is in here with us. I Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy.